again. Oh, H.O.I. Detroit in the building. I'm here with the brother Gabriel. It might be the Archangel Gabriel. We'll find uh, out. We will find out. Next episode, right? <laughs> so, tune in. Find out, right? All right? Let's bring the most high, man. We had a beautiful, beautiful, powerful day. A piece of first fruits that we're in right now. We have to the camp. You know, it was a little bit of, you know, back and forth here and there. A little bit of monkey ranch in the plan of the most high, but we stood strong, strong, man. <laughs> we stay strong and we still consistent and we're being blessed by the most high. It's a beautiful thing. So peace the first fruits, let's go. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 4. Bring it out. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocation, which you shall proclaim in this season. So the Lord said that these are the feasts of the most high. It's holy convocation. Convocation means to gather. Right? The Lord said you have to gather as a nation, as a people, like in Zephaniah 201. That's what we're doing. We're gathering like-minded people. That's in the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahushua. Jump to verse 9. Verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be coming to the land which I give unto you, and ye shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Right. The Lord said, when you come to the land that I give you, but even so, even though we're not in our homeland, Jerusalem, we still have to keep these feasts. Right? Jump. Keep going. And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave You know what? And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheep in he land without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. So we have to give sacrifice for a burnt offering to keep these feast days. It's like a contract. And also with the burnt offering, that's also pertaining to your sins. Right? When you come when you come into these feasts, the most highs give you a chance for repentance through the spirit. Because what? These feast days is part of your protection. In the world, we want to follow the ways of Christmas, celebrations, Halloween, all these wicked holidays of the white man, the Caucasian devil. But we don't want to follow the feast days of the Most High. Not knowing that the Most High know you love to enjoy yourself and celebrate. And he's going to give you an easy way how to do it. And also, you just got to praise his name. And he's going to bless you with it. And he's giving you the righteous food to eat. The righteous food to eat. The wine to drink. Relax. Have a good time. Because what? Even the Most High knows that you're still in this captivity. You need to break. We are. Verse 13. In the meat offering thereof shall be two ten deals of the fine flour mingled with oil. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Most High said the meat offering thereof shall be two tenths, two tenths deals of fine flour mingled with oil. The Most High is showing you how to season your food. Fine. And how you're supposed to cook it. And not leave it raw like Esau. The Lord said put it with the flour and the oil and know how to cook it correctly. So that's the car right there when Jake yesterday at the camp and he was talking about uh, we're not supposed to be eating no meat. So that means you don't want to keep the feast of first fruits now. So the most high saying your food's supposed to smell good and taste good. So the most high already teach you, you better know how to cook. And if you don't, you better learn. But with Esau, he got the, the trees, the, the damn cheese, the the, the damn uh, guacamole and all this stuff, and the crackers. Right? If you go to an Edomite White House and you see the damn cabinets, all they got is mayonnaise and cheese. You go to our house, you see all different types of seasoning, right? Creole seasoning, you know, salt and pepper. You got the hot pepper, you got all different types of seasoning, right? Uh, army seasoning, adobo, arroz con pollo for that. All different types of seasoning. Yeah, like the sister was saying, we are. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine. And the drink offering for the Most High is of wine. 
Uh-huh. Check this. You know, it's funny. It's like Jake. When one of his people's God, he goes to the graveyard and he does what? He calls her. For that person. Not knowing the most high. drink that you pour it is supposed to be for me. It's not even supposed to be for your dead ones. It's supposed to be for me. When you're drinking and having a good time and relaxing and partying, it's supposed to be in my name and righteousness. That's why the Lord don't deal with birthdays, because that's idol worship. You feel like that day is only for you. You could be a wicked nigga your whole life. Day of your birthday. Everybody showing you love. Yeah, yeah, yo. Yo, bro, do you give me this for my birthday? Yo, bro, man, come on, man. I ain't getting no money in that, man. What's going on, man? And then you're like, look, brother, you weak. Hmm. Imagine on Facebook, too, social media. If it's your birthday, if nobody's saying happy birthday, you know how you feel. <laughs> you say, it'd be bad as hell, right? Sometimes they'll even put their birthday as their hiding. And then I'll put it as public again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like in the yeah. like like old post. Like the old post. Yeah. Happy birthday to me. Uh, and they're like, oh, it's your birthday? Good luck. Man, brother, can you show me all that? Yeah, because the most high ain't dealing with that. Like the brothers and sisters in Detroit say, the most high ain't dealing with that, man. <laughs> right? And that's why what even happens, even on people's birthday, guess what happens? It's like sometimes they get locked up. See, they get locked up. That's the Lord giving you a quick judgment. The fourth part of his head. And he shall eat neither bread nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the same until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. You are? It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. That's another cut. The Lord said you're supposed to keep these feast days forever. Forever. But what if you're in captivity? In all your dwellings. Good. Okay, so when you say you shouldn't eat bread or parched corn, like what do you mean by that? What he means by that, speaking about the bread, it's like Matthew 4 and 4, the bread is the work. But what he means by that is that first you have to give all credit to the most high. People's rush and they go in and try to eat for themselves, they just want to enjoy their own life. Not knowing that the feast of the first fruits is everything that you have, you're supposed to give credit to the most high first. That's how it goes. That's why I was saying with certain people, I'll say, yo, let's do the feast of first fruits first. And then we eat after. That's why I said until the self same day that you have brought an offering to your God. So you gotta be an offering before you go and start eating. That's why it is. That's why even in, in New York, New Jersey, El Torah, every Saturday, you always say, look, I know the food is there on the table and everything, but look, let's eat, let's, let's, let's bring out this word first. Right. Let's bring out these scriptures. Let's get the spiritual food first. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then we'll get the physical food out. Right? That's what I was saying. You all? And ye shall come unto you from the mor- from the morrow after the Sabbath. From the day that he brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So after the end of the first Passover, seven weeks, we speak about the seven Sabbaths, that's when the Feast of Pentecost comes, which is the Feast of First Fruit. Pentecost and First Fruit is the same feast day. Right? For example, Pentecost is basically like Pentecost is basically the, the, um, the Greek way of saying first fruits. Right? The you know? Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So after those fifty days, count those seven Sabbaths, that's when it's the Feast of First Fruits. And the number seven, right? No, no, uh, after the Passover, you count those fifty days, that's the Feast of First Fruits. That's Pentecost, right? And the Most High deals with numbers and everything. That's why he says, after the seven Sabbaths. Each Sabbath is so powerful because the Sabbath is also for a time of repentance. Right? Let me show you how. 
Hold that and let's get Genesis chapter 2 and verse 2. 2 verse 2. Yeah. That's why, we, that's why we go out there and teach people, we tell them, like, yo, you're breaking the most high Sabbath. Like, you don't know what you're doing. The Sabbath is the, is, the, um, is the end of the day of the weeks. The most high is giving you a chance to cleanse your ways for the first weeks, the first few days. You might, do, you might be going off the first six days, whatever, every day, and then the seventh day of the Sabbath is the most high is giving you a chance to repent. And you're keeping it. Right? Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day. And God blessed the seventh day, also like he did with the seven weeks for Pentecost, you know? And sanctified it. And did what? Sanctified it. And sanctified. Right? Sanctification. Sanctifies to make it pure and holy. And we're also a holy people, like I said, Leviticus 20 26. So you're supposed to be separated and sanctified. The Sabbath day is sanctified, you know? Because that in it he had rested from all his work. The most high rested from all his works, you know? Which God created and made. Now, they might say that word, the most high rested, and they'd be like, hold up, God get tired? No, he don't get tired. Man get tired. Let's prove that. Without that, let's get um, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Right, man get tired, but the most high showed us a Sabbath or the seven days, or even the six days that he worked, making all things which pray out by Shinyam Shah. On the seventh day, that's the rest for man. That's the example. The Lord don't get tired. Bring it out. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God... What is that? That the, that the everlasting God... The everlasting. From the beginning to the end. Yeah, how about she is going to be here forever? That's why he gave us what? As the people of Israel, the everlasting kingdom. Everything about us and the Most High, all connect, is about everlasting. Eternity is not a temporary thing. Esau got, etern got what? Esau got eternity and damnation. But he has temporary in this kingdom. You know what? The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, right? You know? Fainted not. What it says? Fainted not. Now, fainted means what? You're getting tired. You're fainted. Right? It'd be hot as hell. One day you go outside, you go, especially you working all day. You get home, you just drop right down in front of your damn bed and you don't even get on the bed. You don't even take off your clothes and take a shower. You just drop down and you just go straight to sleep. That's because you fit it because you was tired. You're being overworked. But the most high don't get tired, we all. Me, neither is weary. Neither is weary. He don't get tired. He don't get uh, 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 uh. do like that. He's immortal. So let's deal with him. Right? We all. There is no searching of his understanding. There's no searching of his understanding. Everything that he created. Why he talked about numbers for seven weeks, seven days. Why he talked about the other nations. And how he made them wicked like, like, like a bunch of demons. Why we keep going up and down. We keep going to the top. And the next thing, we break God's commandments. We go to the bottom again. Right. Why the most high continue to have mercy upon us. Even though you know we're what? We're backbiters. We're backsliders. Why is that? Because what? You can't really search his understanding. The most High does everything for a reason. Like what happened today, when we seen Timothy at the camp, we didn't know he was going to show up. But like Brother Gary was saying the whole day, he was like, yo, man, we, there's somebody we got to reach out with. But Satan to stop the car here and there, this and that, almost the feast day, we got canceled, whatever, there's somebody we got to reach out with. Yeah. And he came in, and he was just suited and booted. His whole body was a sign. From the shirt, the chain that he had, the ring on his finger, the hat that he had, the white sneakers, the dance, everything, his whole body was the sign. But then we read the scriptures and we just started breaking down into it. But the scripture says what? Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Reprove, you show them their sins. Let them know who they are. Rebuke, let them know you're not supposed to be doing this no more. And break them down. And exhort, build them back up. That's how it is. When it comes to our people, you got to break them down with the scriptures and build them back up. Let them know who they are. Don't just leave them crush. But when it comes to the heathens, you can do that. You can break them, brush them, stop, do whatever they do. Spiritual. Is the brother inside the violence? <laughs> you said I can do what? <laughs> man, man tell you the Lord is on hands. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, all right. You know, that's it on there, right? I right, dropped that. Let's go. Mark chapter 2 and verse 27. 
Mark chapter 2 and verse 27. You ain't excited, brothers? <laughs> hey, the Lord said, wait, brother, be patient. Right? Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man. And not man for the Sabbath. See, the Sabbath was created for man. That's two things he's speaking about. All nations is supposed to rest on a Sabbath day. The Sabbath was the Lord's glory for the nation of Israel. But all nations is supposed to keep that Sabbath too by resting. For example, Amalek, he said he's a Jew. If you a Jew, why do you got us working for you? Especially on the Sabbath. Why is it you can take a break on the Sabbath, but we can't take a break and you got us working? Because what? You're not the real Jew. And you're not even keeping God's commandments. Because it's not for you. It is not for him. It's for us. Alright? Drop that. And let's go to Leviticus chapter 23. And we'll go to verse 16. Right? Leviticus. the first fruit. Bring it out. Chapter 23, verse 16. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You know? Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deal. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baking with leaven. They shall be what? They shall be baking with leaven. You see, we're the best cooks in heaven. Uh -huh. And the most high is teaching us how to how to how to keep these feast days correct. He's teaching us how to make the foods and everything, you know. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. They are the first fruits like unto the Lord. For example, Moshe says every firstborn gets all things. Gets the inheritance of all things. But guess what? The feast of first fruits is right after what? Passover. The Passover is actually supposed to be the first feast day of the Most High. And then the second is the feast of first fruits. It starts with the Passover first. Killing all your enemies first. That's what the Most High did. He passed over the heathens like a ghost, like a reaper. Part of the reaping for the first fruits. And then come in the feast of first fruits. We all. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without limits of the first year. You see how the most high is dealing with numbers? Right? Seven weeks, you know, bread, seven lambs, right? And then hit. Jacob's talking about I can't eat no meat. Well, he's supposed to eat no meat. And one young bullet and two rams, they shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire, of sweet savor unto the Lord. So the Most High said, when the food, cook the food, make sure it's well done, make sure it tastes good and it smells good, and even have some wine. The Lord is teaching us how to have a feast. That's why we see in these movies, these Edomites. They have like the kings and the, the, the queens and the priests and everything. And then they have the table with the fruits and all the chicken and even the pork and all that stuff. You know, following that, whatever. And you got the king and the queen and the seat and everything, having a good time with the golden cup. They got that from us. That's not them. That's us. None of that is them. The gold, silver, jewelry, all that's us. You know what? Then he shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. Right, you know? And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord. With the two lambs, they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. Now, this is another scripture right here that shows, remember in the, in the, in the, um, the Christian church, they say, oh, you got to just pray over the food, and it's blessed. Pray over the pork, and the Lord won't accept it. The Lord won't accept no pork. But the Lord said, when you pray over what? The lamb and the food that you're giving to the Most High, you're going to be blessed. And you're blessing the food. That's why before you eat, you always got to pray. But you got to pray on the food that the Most High requires you to eat, that he says is lawful, like in Leviticus chapter 11, which is the dietary law. Right, read on. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day 
that it may be a holy convocation unto you. You know, ye shall do no servile work therein. So on this feast day, we're not supposed to work. Not only is, is it a Sabbath, we're also not supposed to work. The Lord literally is saying, He wants you to chill, kick back, relax, praise His name, enjoy the food and the party, and have a good time and holy convocation. Gather together, have fun, in righteousness. No working for your enemy, none of that. You know what? It shall be a statue forever. It shall be what? It shall be a statue forever. So not only do we got the Sabbath, every Friday evening and Saturday evening, a gathering, we also have the new moon, which is once a month, another gathering, and we also have the big feast days. Passover, Feast of First Fruits, Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Tabernacles, and all of these are celebrations. All of these are celebrations. So when Jake say that ain't nothing about the truth or whatever, hey, y'all going, y'all talking about, oh, Jake was talking about camp. He said, man, you trying to bring us back to slavery. What? <laughs> we in slavery right now. The, the, the laws and commandments of the Most High is giving us a way out of the slavery. And it gets some rest. Talking about we in slavery. Yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. You just trying to bring, bring me back to slavery, brother. And he was cursing at us, and by the end of the night, he had a red star on his damn shoulder. Thinking it's a game. Talking about slavery, the Most High says, man, this, this work and his commandments is not grievous. And Christ even said, come follow me. Come unto my yoke. It's light. It's not grievous. It's not heavy. These commandments is easy to keep. You just got to keep it in order to keep the commandments of the most high God. And try to get into the kingdom of heaven. Damn white man, the holidays, the most high ain't trying to hear your music. Talking about, uh, happy birthday, Shazuria. Most high said, oh yeah? I'm gonna give you a birthday, all right? I'm gonna give you a death day. The birth and the death on the same day. Right? That's why Jake that came at the camp today, he said today was his birthday, 15 years old. And I said, he said, when you celebrate your birthday? He said, nah. See what that means? The most high started to deal with him earlier. What about little? Right? You know? And all your dwellings, Throughout your generation. All your dwellers throughout your generations. No matter what land you in, because guess what? The Passover, we kept that in the land of Egypt. In oppression. So nobody got any excuse. Right? Drop that. Let's get Judges chapter 5, verse 11. That's crazy. The Lord gotta force you to have a good time in this day. Yeah. He gotta force you to relax. Because he know you are a person. That's what it says in um, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. It says they wear out the saints. Israel's the saints. We're getting worn out, man. God is working six days, seven days. If Esau could have was working 12 days a week, he'll put an extra five days to make it 12 days and say, You better work. Like that show, The Underground Railroad. The, um, the, other, the other movie, um, uh, 12 Years a Slave. What they're behind. Yeah. Tell him, um, one man can change a thousand. Remember when he was like, uh, I don't want to say I love him hard. The white dude was like, um, why did you do this? He's like, because remember he said it's more of more of him out here. Right. We can't let that happen. And he shut, they went and shot everybody up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was an underground trouble. And that's so as well. Esau know when you know the truth and you know that the power of the Most High is with you, that's about the Maccabees. And they scare when you know that because your whole mindset changes. That's why it's always insane. Why do you think they bring like a damn SWAT team against a so-called black man? One. They don't bring one car. They bring a SWAT team. Multiple cars. We pulled up in Patterson and it, as soon as we came out there in Patterson, right, and the Zabal was on the mic, he said, shut the wall, shut the wall, this is the house of Israel. <laughs> like, what the hell? He didn't even get out of scripture. And they had like 12 cop cars in Patterson for us teaching the word. And it was like probably seven of us. He didn't even get out. 
Shut the law, shut the law. Oh, let me get the book of some. <laughs> Step back. Hebrew is a lie. Step back. And I said, hold on, I didn't know the Hebrew is a lie. We didn't even say nothing. It was watching the whole time. Yeah. It was watching the whole time. And they know when we have that spirit. Right now, what's going on right now is of the spirit. The words of the most high is of spirit. It's not of flesh. It's not how big you are, how strong you look, how much muscles you got. No. The law is going to show a man and a woman through their spirit. It's going to manifest. It's going to manifest. You can be five foot tall, right? A short person, such short stature, but be a giant spirit. Like Brother Nike Palmer, uh, Wi-Fi. Brother like like what? Probably like like five, five ten or something. But you can just see in his spirit. That's why the cop came right at him. Came right at him. He had a whole damn lineup. And the cop said, yeah, uh, noise, de noise decimals, whatever, deficit, whatever, and all that stuff. And he said, yeah, we want to apprehend all three of you. And then he said, what y'all what here for? What y'all doing? What's the noise decimal? And then they, they, they started to get aggravated because they didn't know he knew what he was talking about. They looked at him like just a little kid. But they started to get aggravated because he was questioning their own law, which they don't even know. They don't even know the noise decimal for that place. Yeah, the brother in Clubhouse looked it up. It says, first they gotta bring the little meter and check the noise decimal for the sound of the damn radio or the speaker. They didn't do that. They didn't do none of that. So they said, I wanna apprehend all three of y'all. They went from that to say, no, we're gonna straight for him. Straight for him. And that was a kidnapping. Kidnapping. You know why? Because they didn't run in his Miranda rights. They sure did. I said that. I said, they just arrested that brother. Yeah. You know why? It's like it's like in the slave auctions. I don't think they gotta do that no more. Right. Right. And, and a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. So what does that mean? This is really a prison. They don't tell you yet because they'll arrest you and you go to court and you thinking that they did you dirty or that they're breaking the law. No, they changed the laws right under your nose. You didn't even know. Literally, you didn't even know. This is really captivity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Judges chapter 5, verse 11. They are delivered from the noise of the archer. That's why we got to be delivered from the noise of the archer, which is the nuclear missiles. When you speak about archers, it's speaking about missiles. You think we need to be delivered from arrows? You can dodge a damn arrow. Right? He's speaking about missiles. And who's the archers? Who's the one that's swinging that ball? The other nations. The other nations are what? Pressing that button. They got nuclear missiles right now. Intercontinental ballistic missiles. To melt your skin right off your damn face. In seconds. You know? In the places of drawing water. In the what? In the places of drawing water. It says in the places of drawing water. Why did it say water? Water also pertains to affliction. What does that mean? You're speaking about the sea. Who's the sea? The sea of people. Who's that? The nations. The nations. For example, in the camp yesterday, you see how many people just going back and forth, that crowd? Yeah. That's the sea of people. That's the sea of people. What are we doing out there? We're fishing. We're the fishermen. Ah. Yeah. We're bringing a different bait, trying to bring them in. We're fishing in what? In a lake of darkness. In a lake of darkness. So we throw in that bait, Whoever catches it, we try to pull them out. See that? Yeah. But that's the sea of people. That's the nations. Right? We got to be delivered from who? These nations. How do you know they are our enemy? Let's find out. Hold that. We can need my body. Mm -hmm. Right? the what? The righteous act. So when we keep the feast days of the most high, this is a righteous act. Right? Not a wicked act. You're not following the holy days of what? The day of white man. 
Saint Pope Alexander V for the next century of damn century, whatever the hell you want to call himself, when the real saints are Israel. We're keeping the righteous acts of the Most High God, you know? The righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Even the righteous acts towards Israel, and wherever our people are, the black and the the American, that's Israel, that's Jerusalem. No matter what, we can't escape who we are. Right? Uh, drop that, and let's go to um, Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Let me get this here. Right? right? Amos chapter 5, verse 18. We have the book of Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Woe okay. unto you that desire the day of the Lord. You know what? So what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Be on. As if a man did flee from the lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house, and laid his hand on the wall, and the now serpent bit him. Now check this. Read that part, read that scripture part again from the top. As if a man did flee from the lion, and a bear met him. Now it says, as if a man did flee from a lion, right? That lion is speaking about who? The Edomite. Right? How you how you know that? For example, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Yeah, hold that go to 1 Peter 5 verse 8. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil. As a roaring lion. As a what? As a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. There's two lions in the Bible. The lion of Judah is Christ, and the other lion is Esau. Jacob and Esau are, remember, they're twin brothers. One got melanin, and the other one got what? Leprosy. One is black, and the other one is red. But they're twin brothers. There's two of everything in the Bible. That's the balance. That's why the Lord said in Proverbs 11, the false balance is an abomination. Why are they following the wicked holidays? Of their, of their world, in the world, in wickedness, we're following the righteous peace days of the Most High in celebration of the death and destruction of our enemies. Right? That's the balance. All our feast days are celebrating the destruction of our enemies. Every single feast day. Every one of them. That's why the Most High says, don't hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be able to punish. Don't try to join in hand with them. Don't try to enjoy their ways in their life. That means that you're picking it on their side. You're eating at the devil's table instead of eating with the angels of the Most High God. Right? I'll drop that and go back to English chapter 5. English chapter 5, verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. You know what? So what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And that's why we're trying to get our people out of this darkness. Because we want to know where the day of the Most High come. And you're keeping these feast days. This is, today's the feast of first fruits. You see the folly that was going on today? The wickedness that was going on? You think the most high gonna judge them? And guess what? The piece of first fruit is supposed to show up to them. That's why everybody hears this word, they're marked. You know? As if a man did flee from a lion, and the bear met him. And the bear is who? Russia. That bear is Russia, you know? Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall. And a serpent bit him. And that serpent is sword. They said it's Chinese, the Japanese are the Chinese, but it's also Eastern Chinese. That, that little serpent, that little dragon. You know? Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Right? Drop that. Let's get Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 27. This is what I'm for. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The Lord is accepting their feast days. Because they ain't doing it the right way. The feast of first fruits is the blessing of the Most High God. We're supposed to be thanking the Most High that we even live to celebrate this feast. Day. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 27. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies, who vex them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried out unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors. Hold on. What the Lord said, according to thy manifold mercy, the Most High gave us what? Saviors. The Most High gave us what? Saviors. So all the prophets of the Bible, 
the time period that they came in, they were Jews as saviors. The ultimate savior is Christ. That's why I say salvation is only for the Jews. Right? He's saving us all. He's the ultimate savior. The most high is the one that raised them up. Saviors. You know? Who saved them out of the hand of the enemies. Wait, what is salvation? Who saved them out of the hand of the enemy. That is salvation. When you're saved out of the hands of your enemies. Now, ask yourself a question. If our people think we got salvation, why are we still in the hands of our enemies? Then? Uh -huh. Because what? We have to endure. We got grace right now. We didn't get the salvation yet. We're in a grace period right now. We have to endure and stay consistent. Salvation comes when Christ comes. And he's going to be the ultimate savior. That's why he was even born for the nation of Israel. To what? To die for our sins. To bring us back to righteousness. Right? Drop that and let's go to uh, Matthew, no, Acts chapter 5, verse 31. We're still in the midst of our enemies, but we still have to keep these feast days. That's how we get that hedge of protection. The Lord says, What? Those growing waters, and you're in the midst of your enemies, keep these feast days, that hedge of protection around you, the angels around you. No matter where you go, the angels around you. Whatever captivity you're in, as long as you're keeping these commandments, the Lord's going to protect you. The rest of you are going to be judged left and right, but you're going to be protected. That's why the camp is very important. That's the battlefield. But coming over here and doing the free season of the most high, this is very important to you. It's a balance. You can't have one without the other. That's why the Maccabees, how they wrote, they went out to the battlefield with this sword, and they carried their garments for what? To keep the free season of the most high to you. They even prayed in the battlefield for the most high to send angels to destroy the heathens right in front of them. I like that thing. Bring it up. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Him have God exhausted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. For to give repentance to who? To Israel. Repentance is only for us and what? And what else? And forgiveness of sin. And forgiveness of sins. To forgive us for our sins. Because a just man, a woman falls seven times but gets right back up. The sins that we committed, but the Lord says what? Don't let your sins weigh you down. That's why it's important about the feast days and the Sabbath, because what? It's like a reset. All the sins you committed, you get to that feast day, ask the most high forgiveness, and you keep these feast days. It's like a reset. The Lord is giving you mercy. The devil will try you, but guess what? Stay consistent. That's why you gotta fight that good fight. Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Fight that good fight. Hold fast to that which is good. Right? But remember, we all going to be tried, man. We're all going to be tried. We could have made a lot of excuses like, you know what, man? We can stay here. Just relax, man. We got to keep this feast day, whatever, you know, all this stuff. We can do it tomorrow, every day. Nah. Nah, man. Stay consistent. You know? We had camp. The Sabbath. And now we're doing a piece of first fruits, man. Uh-huh. We had a late camp last night as well. That was a beautiful thing. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Bring it out. What shall we say? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The Lord said, If God be for us, who can be against us? If the Lord is with us, who can stop us? Nobody. That's why they terrified. That's why they try to lock the brother night come up right in front of his brothers sisters in the congregation to try to what? Break the rest of the spirit. Um, they try to do that like they usually do in the cotton field, plantation. They'll take the biggest J and literally fuck break it right in front of everybody. Break it. Break his spirit. It's not about his muscles. It's not about his flesh. It's about the spirit. Why? Because we have the spirit of God with us. They know that. They know that. One thing that's very hard to do is try to break a man's will. It's very hard to do that, but when you do it, that man is broken forever. He's done. He's done. And guess what he does? He kills himself. Because he don't got no reason to live. He's like, I'm already walking dead. I'm already walking dead. Huh? Yeah. That's what they do. As a nation, the enemy have taken us and has broken us. Mentally, spiritually, physically. He kept oppressing us. Non-stop, keep putting that pressure, applying that pressure. And that's why they always start what? They always start vicious first. Vicious. They will whip you down to, to you about to die. 
give you some water, which is vinegar they'll give you, to add injury to insult, and they'll whoop you down again, and then take another person that's watching you get him beat down to death and whoop him too. To put that fear in front of everybody. They got no limits. Yeah, very cool. That's why the Lord says what? They have no mercy. Not just no mercy. The Lord says he's going to send a nation against you. Fierce continents. Who don't care about old or young. They have no mercy in their mind. No brains, nothing. That's why they're psychopathic. If you call them who you are, that's why they get back. Uh, it's a Oh, so I can jump that. Let's go to some Pentecost, which is also known as the Feast of First Fruits. Right? Let's go to Leviticus. Matter of fact, Exodus 23 and 16. That's crazy. Exodus 23 and Leviticus 23. They both match. Little scriptures match. Exodus 23 and 16. Check this out. Exodus chapter 23. Verse 16, bring it out. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. So it says the feast of harvest, right? Why is the Most High speaking about uh, fruits? Speaking about plants, trees, harvesting, right? And what's the harvest as well? The harvest also speaking about our people that's come back to the truth. That's come back to the truth. Because the most high liking our people to trees and fruits and plants. That's why it says in the book of Matthew, it says you shall know them by their fruits. Either good fruits or bad fruits, evil fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. Right? And the Lord have told you what? Out of all nations, going into the truth to bring what? Good fruits. Right? Hold that. Let's get John chapter 15, verse 16. John chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 16. This Bible got everything. They got speaking about food, plants, trees, fruits, animals. The symbolic in this Bible is crazy. Bring it up. John chapter 15, verse 18. Uh, 16. Verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. So Christ said, you didn't chose me, I chose you and I ordained, which means from the beginning, to go and bring forth fruits. Now, you might think, hey, what, what you want an apple? What, you want a banana or something? Right? Not knowing what, they don't got the understanding. But check who actually thought that. This is how you know this Bible is beautiful. Hold that and get Genesis. Right? Get Genesis chapter, this is funny. The, the scripture y'all heard all this time, and it's going to be used perfect for the Feast of First. Right? Genesis chapter, boom, Genesis chapter 4, and go to verse 2. Genesis. Chapter 4, verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. So Abel was a shepherd. Right? Who fed the flock. This is about Cain and Abel, right? But, but Cain was what? But Cain was a tiller of the ground. He was a what? Tiller of the ground. He was a husband, a husband person. Like basically worked on the, on the plants, the fields, the plants and the fruits. So Abel was a shepherd boy. He was able to lead the flock. But Cain, who was what? Was that damn devil that was watching over the field. Why did I compare that to what? The slave masters. What do you got in the field now? Picking cotton. Us. Everything ties into this, to this place now. That's why they got what? Cain. Like the word Cain. When they got the Cain like an old man. They're walking like this and that. And hitting you with this and that. What you doing, boy? Come on, boy. How are you doing? Get back. With the cane. A tiller of the ground. There you go. Yeah. That was one of the first, first slave fields that we were doing. Yeah. So Abel's watching over the sheep. 
That's Israel. And Esau's watching over the field, tilling the ground like a what? A man of the field, like it says in Genesis 25. So even then, Esau has knowledge. He's looking at everything. And he's circumspect. He's overwatching everything. He wants to see everything go right his way. You know what? And in the process of time, it came to pass. Now read this part slowly. In the process of time, it came to pass that what? That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Cain brought the fruit of the ground from his harvesting an offering unto the Lord. Right? Read on. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. Right. Now it's going to show you why. Read on. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Why did the Most High have respect unto Abel and his offering? Then the Lord said, when you, when you sacrifice unto me, that got to be of a lamb or, or, or animal. Blood requires blood. For your sins. Life requires life for your sins. Now, Jake may say, hey man, I'm eat fruits. Fruits got life. You know, we understand that, but it don't have blood. It don't have blood. And instead of the Most High killing you, instead, you sacrifice that animal. Do you? This is crazy. I found this out about seven months ago. Seven or eight months ago. They said the animal that's lawful to eat they have a certain vein where when you kill the animal, they feel no pain. Listen to what I said. The animals that's lawful to eat, like the sheep and the goats and the cows, when you kill them, they have a certain part in their body. When you kill them, they feel no pain. Because it's supposed to be used to eat. But the animals that you're not supposed to eat, when you kill them, they feel pain. Yeah. Most I will. I'm, I'm going to look up the, um, the thing again. I'm going to send you out the link. It's it broken down. Everything, all that stuff. And it says, that's why the Most High said these animals is lawful. When you sacrifice them food, for the food, it's not going to have no pain because the Most High made them like that. He's supposed to eat them in righteousness. That's why he told us to kill them. That's why he's telling them to kill them. Exactly. What the Lord does, he don't give you a thousand breakdowns on what he's supposed to be doing. You just say, just do it. Don't ask, don't question. Listen, for example, I always bring this up. Hair. When the Lord said the man is supposed to cut his beard, your memory and your energy from just growing your hair to its maximum potential. But every time you cut your hair, all the energy you get, you already have for your body, your nutrients, for your muscles to make your body function, all of that goes up to cut for the hair. Every, yeah, so if you notice, Jake, Jake usually be bad skinny with long hair. Why? Because the nutrients he's supposed to eat to give his body that energy is being all used to grow back his hair. So he's losing power and muscle. So when you cut your hair, you got to do double, triple the work to get back that energy and nutrients. And the most high, he didn't say all that. He just gave us two stories, Samson. What did he say? And the Lord just said Leviticus? Just don't cut That's it. Simple. You gotta you wanna say something? Right, we don't? Um, Genesis chapter 4, right? Verse 4. In Abel. Oh yeah, why did the most I say? Well he bought his first thing was flock, and the Lord respect Abel and his offering. It's also like the scripture of Leviticus, where we're talking about what? The offering. The Most High is going to accept it, and He's going to bless it. The offering of what? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23 again. Leviticus chapter 23, and let's go to verse... And let's go to verse... Boom. Verse 16. Leviticus. Chapter 23, verse 16. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals, 
They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. So these are offerings to the Lord. Now let's see what it says right here again. Let's go to verse 19. Verse 19. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats. You shall do what? Sacrifice one kid of the goats. For what? For a sin offering. For what? For a sin offering. No, I thought he said fruits. For a sin offering. You're supposed to sacrifice one kid of a goat, which is the youngest goat, for the sin offering. Not fruits. But Abel came to the most high with fruits. And the Lord didn't accept it. We don't. And two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. We don't. And the priest shall weigh them with the bread of the fruit of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord. With the two lambs. Right? And they shall be what? They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. You're blessing the fruit. And you're also blessing the people. But you have to make that sacrifice for that goat. For your sin offering. And the priest does what? The most high give the priest the ability to take away your sins. Through those feast days. That's how important this feast day is. Yeah. yeah. The anointing and everything. That's part to help you. Whatever demons we all have on us, that's part to help you. You come to these feast days, you're being blessed. Not just being blessed. You're reading the scriptures to what? To baptize your spirit. To cut them demons that's trying to come on you. To remind you, bring everything back to remembrance. To remember that we in this captivity for breaking God's laws, but we also find a way out of this captivity for keeping us by keeping us. Uh -huh. And it says you'll be a holy convocation. This is the most high cleansing us when we keep in these feast days. Right? Now go back to Genesis again. Uh -huh. Genesis chapter 4 and go to verse 5. Genesis chapter 4, verse 5. So, so the Lord had respect of uh, Abel because he was able to keep the laws. That's why. But Cain can't do it. We are. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. He had not respect. Why? Because Esau can't keep God's laws. That's not his spirit. He think he knows better, he'll do something else. Right. Cain knew the laws, because guess what? Adam and Eve told him the laws. He knew it. But he didn't want to keep it. Because it's not in his spirit to keep it. Yeah. You know what? And Cain was very wrong. And Cain was very angry. Esau is very angry today. He knows he can't keep the laws of God, so he makes his own laws. You know what? And his continence fell. And his continence fell. Like what? For his continence. Wicked. Countenance fell. Looking like a damn creep. Like a murderer. We you know what? And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? And why is thou continent fallen? Why did Yahweh Bashimel Shah ask Cain that? Because the Most High had his parents, Adam and Eve, teaching the laws. So now he's saying, Why are you mad? He's got a new laws. Right. There's no new laws. I already told you the law. The law's been there since the beginning. It been here since the beginning. When they talk about the Bible and all this stuff, no, the law's been here since the beginning. Christ's been here since the beginning. He was that death angel that killed the Egyptians. You know? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? See? He said, if Cain, if you did well, I would accept you. But Cain can't do well. Just like Esau, he can't do nothing good today. You know? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Look, look, look what it said. It says, if, if you don't do well, Cain, sin lieth at the door. What is that sin manifesting? Satan. The dragon, the demon, the devil. So he told Cain, he's giving you an option and a choice. If you do well, I'll accept you. You come into my house, I accept you. You're my son. But if you're not, if you don't do well, you can go to sin. Sin is lying at the door, you know? And unto thee shall be his desire. And unto Satan and sin shall be what? His desire. With Esau, unto the demon Lucifer, Beelzebub, Satan. That's who they love. 
The Most High told that to Cain since the beginning. He said, you break my laws, you want to find ways to say it? Hey, guess what? You're going to love Satan. That's all you're going to be doing. That's all you're going to know. You know? And thou shalt rule over him. And thou shalt rule over him. Satan is going to rule you now. That's going to be your God. That's going to be your Lord. You know the connotation for Lord? It just means master. Yeah, it just means master. That's why we say what? Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. That's the most high true name. And the son Yahweh Shah. We can say Lord, but we got to know who we pray to. Who we pray to Yahweh uh, Bashem Yahushua. That's where we get our power from. Right? Uh, I said on that. Uh, drop that. And let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Okay. Yeah, Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Say calm, you got it. Say calm, you got it. Look it out. Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy neighbors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, so the feast of harvest, which you have sown in the field. Like the most I said in Genesis, no, Galatians chapter 6, right? He says what? When a man is sowing, he's going to reap what he's sowing. When he's sowing good fruits, guess what? He's going to reap good fruits. But if he's sowing wickedness, lies, adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, fornication, demonic, wicked stuff. Like we was at camp last week, and we had a damn witch bullet to camp. Literally pull up to camp. Saying she does sorcery, all of this and that, black magic, white magic, whatever. She got a wicked book and all that. That's her sowing what? Wicked is evil. So when that death angel come to her, and she even said she wanted to kill herself. Yeah, she gonna reap what she sold. She's speaking into existence. She already know. She already know. She doing power. She, 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 she already know. She already know. The worst part. Right. Right. So Esau got, does the ways of wickedness, and that's going to prove it right here. This is 2nd Entrance chapter 3, verse 36. I'm going to read this real quick. 2nd Entrance chapter 3, verse 36. It says, Thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts. That's why Abel was able to what? Sacrifice the righteous sacrifice for the Most High was accepted by the Lord. Because Abel represents Israel. But not the heathen. The heathen is Esau. They're not able to keep the feast days or the laws of the Most High. It's not in their spirit. The Lord won't allow it. He will not allow it. Right? Uh, officially, uh, that's what you're doing. They ain't got it. Verse 16. Which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy neighbors out of the field. Listen to that. It says, at the end of the year, when you gather the neighbors, out of the field. Us here in Babylon, we're in the field right now. Teach me. We're in the field right now. Not the cotton field. We're in the field right now, going out to these houses in Bowers. In Bowers, the Lord said, your labor is going to be gathered. What does that mean? The works that you put in. The Lord's going to count that cost now. The works that you put in, the most high going to add that. Read it, study it, fast it, pray it, come to the feast days, go to camp, be it sincere, double negative. Giving arms, calling brothers and sisters, checking up on them. The Most High is going to count that for your labor. That's part of the feast. The gatherings. We don't. Three, three times in the year, all of thy males shall appear before the Lord God. See? You can't go against that. The Lord said three times in a year. So this is one of the mandatory, most powerful feast days. All the males are supposed to be here automatically. Automatically. All right? We don't. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifices with leavened bread. We don't. Neither shall the fat of my sacrifices remain until the morning. Right? Jump to verse 19. The first of the first fruit of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see it. A kid in his mother's milk. So what is that speaking about? The feast of the first fruits. The first fruits of your land. When you're planting, you're harvesting, you're gardening it, right? You got fruits, you got vegetables, all that stuff. All of that, it got to be in a basket, and you got to bring that to the feast day. 
The best of the best. The Lord requires the best. The best of the fruits, the vegetables, all of that, you got to bring that to the feast day. That's for the most high. And that's for the brothers and sisters. That's part of it. The Lord ain't messing around. That's why the Lord says what? When you come to the land, I'm going to bless the land. We got we got an abundance of everything. That's why the Lord said, I'm going to make you a head, and everybody else is going to be the tail. You don't got to ask nobody for nothing. They got to learn from you. They got to ask you, because the most high going to keep blessing you nonstop. Yeah, man. That's what it's about. That's why we keep these laws. The Lord got us. Keeping these feast days, most high got us, man. Right? Let's go to Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. Okay. Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. And thou shalt observe the feast of wheat, of the first fruits of wheat harvest. And the feast of end gathering at the year's end. So you got to observe this feast days. And the key thing in that verse that I like, in the feast of the end gathering at the year's end. The Most High Son you're supposed to gather as a nation. Feast day, holy convocation. Why? Because he's gathering the righteous and blessing and putting a hedge of protection around them. And the ones that's outside of it, they're getting hell. They're getting hell. You either give up the program or guess what? You're going to be the next program. And you're going to be the virus. And the Lord going to cleanse that virus. Right? Check this. Look, a whole lot there. And that feast of the end that that's your things. That's what, that would be your uh, feast of the tabernacle. Come. Uh -huh. Come. And that's where we get Thanksgiving from. Our Native Americans is actually here celebrating the feast of the tabernacle. When, our, when the uh, white man came and actually, you know, conned them into help helping them giving them their first fruits of the land, and they provided for, for, for the, that winter coming up. And then what did the white man do? He great drive and pillage them. So, uh, that's a beautiful black point. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me give a quick, let me give you a quick precept to the uh, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. right? So this is a quick one. This is 1 Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 23. 1 Maccabees chapter, chapter 4 verse 23. Then Judas returned to spoil the tents, where they got much gold and silver and blue silk and purple of the sea and great riches. So this is Judas Maccabees for his fight against the other nations, the heathens. And he took their treasures, their silver, their gold, all their riches, right? After this, they went home and sung a song of thanksgiving. Right? So they, they took from the enemy, destroyed the enemy, took what, it, what is theirs, rightfully, because the Most High ordered them to do it, and then went home, celebrated, had a good time, singing the song of Thanksgiving. Right? And praise the Lord in heaven, because it is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Thanksgiving is of us. That was us that was doing it at the feast days, like you said, with the Northern Kingdom, they were celebrating that. That's why Esau took it and flipped it in wickedness. Chopped the head off the Native Americans, the Indians, the head chiefs, and started kicking around and called what? Soccer. Made a sport out of it. And soccer is what? The number one sport on this earth today. They took the sport of our people and used it as mockery and turned it into a soccer game. A sports game for entertainment. Right? Verse 23. Twice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. So the most high keeps showing that we have to appear before him. Can't make no excuses. If you know you got to be here, and you got to find a way to get here, and you know you can get here. You don't want to gather, the Most High is watching over that. This is that hedge of protection. You got to strive, man. Fight for the truth until death, and the Lord shall fight for you. Seek the Lord. 
You gotta strive. The Lord gotta see you make it, man. He gotta see you try. Don't just stay down and be lazy and all that stuff. No, you gotta try. You gotta put in the effort. Everybody's going through it. You gotta put in the effort. Think what happened today. The car broke down. We could have easily been like, yo, I know we we're going back with up. This is not the day. But we did camp and we also doing a feast right now. And we realized Satan was trying to stop this the whole damn day. The whole damn day. As soon as we woke up, the Lord said, awake out of sleep, damn it. <laughs> Wake out of sleep, we got the phones. He said, have you considered Job? Did you miss Job? He's a perfect man. He's a mighty man. The Most High is boasted. That's why it's good to what? Always boast in your house about your shine. Don't, don't boast in yourself. But the Most High created you. So the Most High can boast about himself. He said, look at my servant right there, man. Everything I say, man, he's doing it, man. He's proud, man, like a proud dad. Like a proud dad. Read on. 
and there is none like him in the earth. He said what? There is none like him in the earth. That's what we're trying to be today. We're trying to be the righteous people of the Most High God. There's none like any of us on the earth. Because the Most High said we're peculiar people. That's why when we keep these feast days, the Most High is blessing us more and more. He's happy. For us to put in the effort in captivity, the Lord is happy. And especially when we strive for this, man, the Lord is going to be even more happy, man. Blessings over blessings over blessings. We are. And then outright, man, one that fear of God and the shoe of evil. That's why the Lord said in the book of Habakkuk that he made he didn't make Esau upright. His soul is crooked. Right? He can't go straight. That's why he's what? He's a homosexual by nature. He's not straight. He got to go left and right. He can't even go right. He can't even get right. You know? And still he hold it fast his integrity. And still he hold fast his integrity. That's what we're doing today. When you find out you're a Hebrew Israelite, we are holding fast to our integrity and our dignity and who we truly are with our children in those like That's right. And we show everybody as a light. We got to be that light. We got to show forth our works and righteousness. These are the first fruits, the Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles. All these are very important. Man. I just want to uh, bring out verse 1 again when it says, yeah. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. That's going into just like we brought out the, uh, in Exodus chapter 20, 23, verse 17, when it says, Christ, in a year that all men must present themselves. Come. This is talk, that's what it's talking about. The sons of God, meaning Israel, must present themselves before the Lord on these feast days. <laughs> and when we present ourselves on these feast days, what do we say? Satan comes in and he tries to disrupt all that. Come. And that's what's going on here in Job. Bring it out. And you know what's crazy about that? That's a great, that's a great breakdown. You know what's crazy about that? That means even Satan Tom. got to what? Even Satan got to show up. Even Satan got to show up. So Tom. he has to. Tom, he got to show up. Yeah, there yeah, you go. So the all that today that we went, went through, that's right here in Job. When the sons of God, meaning us, we presented ourselves to what? Keep the feast day of the most high. Keep the feast of first fruit. And what happened? He came in and the most high told him, hey, yeah, you can go down there and touch my church. Go ahead. Go ahead and touch me apart. Oh, bring it up, man. Do all them things that you do and try to get them so that they don't show up. Yeah. And that's what he came down here and did. But what? We still do it. We, you know, made it do it. And here we are to this day, keeping people. And you know what's beautiful about that? Let's get Amos chapter 9. Right? Let's get Amos chapter 9. Right, that's a that's a beautiful point right there. You just put me on the side. Huh? <laughs> I'm gonna use that one. I'm like, yeah, oh, the, the great Gabriel gave, gave me this scripture, brother. <laughs> let's break that for Amos, uh, Amos chapter nine, and let's go to verse. Let's go to verse nine. Amos chapter nine, verse nine. nine. Right, because check this. Remember, the Most High is watching over us. He's seeing everything that's going on. Right? Three times in the year, we got to go to these feast days, like the brother was saying, Satan got to present himself too. So all the feast days we keep, say, once we keep it, we celebrate it, and then stuff starts to happen. Right? And before. Like the Feast of Passover. It was hard for us to get there, and we still made it there. And then after the Feast of Passover, beautiful feast, then we got that BS that happened in Detroit. That BS that happened in Detroit. Try to flip it upside down like we're doing wickedness. Yeah. We're just doing righteous thing out of our smell stuff. But we what? We take that cheap food because we know that's part of the tribulations. Uh -huh. That's part of working most high. Bring it out. Because remember, it's speaking about what? Feast of first fruits, harvest. Right? Let's see what it's also speaking about. Bring it out. Amos chapter 9, verse 9. For lo, I will command and I will sit. The house of Israel among all nations. So the Lord says he's going to command and sift the house of Israel. How was is the Lord doing that? Remember, Satan had what? He had to show himself. Right? You know what? Like as corn is sifted in the seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Now check this. The key word that I'm trying to get there is sift. Right? Why are we speaking about all these different types of vegetables and fruits? Right? Think about coins, talk about fruits, think about sift and all this stuff. Now let's see. There's a good precept. I can write this down. There's a good one. Remember, the brother was saying, Satan is going to show up. Wherever you go, Satan is going to be there. Check this out. 
It says in the sixth. So this is Luke chapter 22, and we shall go to verse 31. Luke chapter two, uh, 22 and verse 31. Luke chapter, matter of fact, start at verse 26. Verse 26, like it. Start at verse 26. Luke chapter 22, verse 26. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that doeth serve. We don't. For, what, for whether is greater, he that sitteth at me, or he that serveth. So Christ was asking, who do you think is greater? One that sitteth at the table and eat, or the one that serving the food? We don't. It is not he that sitteth at me, but I am among you as he that serveth. So Christ is saying, remember, it says what? Men shall not live by bread alone, right? He's the, he's the word of God. He's the book. He's the food. He's also what? He's the milk. He's the meat. He's the wine. He's the oil. He's the whole damn table. The understanding. But he says, look, I'm the actual, I'm the big man in charge right here. That's what Christ is saying. But guess what? I'm at the table. I'm also a servant as well. I don't got to be at the table eating with y'all. I'm also serving y'all as well. Even though he's the greatest among them. That's why it says what? But I am among you as he that serving. See that? I'm among you as a servant. That's what Christ is saying. You know Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. He's speaking about the apostles. Those were the people that endured and what? Fought against all temptations of the world that was wicked. You know what? Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. Come. You know what? And I appoint unto you a kingdom. Now Christ said, I'm going to give you a kingdom. Because what? You endure Christ is speaking to the apostles. He said, I will appoint unto you a kingdom. You know what? As my father have appointed unto me. You see that? That's another cup for the tree. Because the most high is the one that gave the kingdom to his son. And his son said, I'm going to give you a kingdom like my father did for me. Everlasting kingdom. I'm going to give you eternal life. You know what? That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. You're going to eat and drink in the, in the kingdom of the most high God at the table. You know what? And sit on thrones. Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So look, he said, "Be at the table, eat the meat, the food, and also eat my what? The feast days. Attending the feast, coming to the gatherings. Right? Remember, Christ also said in the Book of Matthew, I am. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. He is the feast day. That's the Son of God. Wherever He go, He's going to show you how to do it correctly. Now He said, "I'm going to give you power of the kingdom, and you're going to be sitting on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel." That's what He promised the apostles. Now, check this. After he promised them all of this, right? That's the blessings. Look what he gave. Look what he told them. You know? And the Lord said, Simon, 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 behold, Satan has desired to have you. Now, hold on. First, Christ told him the good, and then he gave him the bad. He said, look, I'm going to bless you. Stay consistent. Endure to the end. I'm going to give you a kingdom. Just the twelve tribes of Israel, like the Most High is doing for us today. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to protect you. All this and that. Keep enduring. The kingdom of heaven is for you. Endure to the end. You shall be saved in these last days. That's the Most High promise in all of this. He's given us motivation to continue to do his work. Keep these feasts. Go to camp and everything. Stay in the spirit. But look what he said to Simon after he told him the good news. Look at the bad news. You know? That he may sift That he may what? That he may sift. That he may what? That he may sift. That he may sift. Now let's go to Amos chapter 9 and verse 9 again. I'm going to read that one. You can hold that one. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. How is the Most High doing that? He's speaking about Satan. He's using Satan to sift our people. That's what he's doing. So Satan, every feast day, is going to try to sift us out. And we got to fight back. How are we fighting back? By making sure we keep these feast days. Making sure we go to camp. Satan is trying to sift us out because the Most High sent him to do that. When your car to break down like that, when we get the bad news in the morning, all that stuff, 
going back and forth every day, how to start camp late and everything, and still come here able to keep the feast day. Same That's up. Satan trying to sift us out. Why? Because the Most High is trying to prove a friend. He got to try us. He want to see everybody ready to put everything for y'all by some shit. We don't? As we. As what? As we. See? Like the wheat of the harvest. All this is speaking about what? Plants, fruit, fruits. Planted, harvested, wheat. As wheat sifted out. We don't? But I have prayed for thee. But Christ prayed for thee, we don't. That thy faith fail not. That thy faith fail not. Faith without works is dead. We can have all this faith, know you in Israel, like know about the feast days, but your works is you coming to the feast day. Your work is you going to camp. You staying in the spirit. Stay consistent. That's why we were what? Timothy, like the brother named Timothy. Yo, you know, you can't make this up, man. The brother was named Timothy, right? Drop that and then get 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. The brother was name was Timothy. They always saying the whole day. Nah, we still gonna go to camp. We still gonna be there. We still gonna be consistent. Yesterday when we came from camp, me and the wife, we was dropping, he was dropping us. We seen a big billboard, and what is that? What is that in the billboard? Um, keep up the good fight. You, you can't make this up, man. The billboard said that. It said, keep up the good fight. That's the Most High, man, through the Spirit, man, telling us keep up the good fight. Yeah. <laughs> Keep up the good fight, man. That's the most I've shown us, man. We're here for a reason. Who's you got? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word. What the Lord said? Preach the word. What is your words? Preach the word. The most I said, preach the word, we don't. Be instant in season. Uh huh. Out of season. See? The Lord said, be instant in season, out of season. It's like the harvest, it's like the seasons. Right? You got summer. Fall, winter, and you got um, spring. Right? Check this. Winter is when everything dies. Spring is when everything spring forth. Comes back up, come back to life again. And then what? Uh, summer is what? Is when the heat. Everyone is out there. Summer is added. What is that added? Be fruitful and multiply. Like spring. That's people are keeping. And then fall. Everything falls back again. See? Everything is in order. Everything's in order, but the Lord says what? Be instant, in season and out of season. You still have to go out there and teach the words of the Most High God, no matter what. Because Israel needs a sign. That's why the Most High brought a brother that was named Timothy. <laughs> Timothy 4 and 2. Right? I'm going to put the priest. Here we go. This Ezekiel. The book said, drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 20, 20, 20, verse 19. Bring it up. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Sabbath. And they have, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. So what that's going into is keep his Sabbath. His these feast days are his Sabbath. And these feast days let him know that you know. That he is your God. Uh -huh. This is part of that mark that he, he puts on you. Oh, I do know I'm the God. I'm gonna mark you as mine. But if you're not keeping these feast days, I'm gonna mark you as not mine. And therefore, Satan shall switch you up. Okay, good. Uh, uh, beautiful breakdown, man. Let me get Toby chapter two, verse one. We're gonna show you all throughout the Bible the forefathers, prophets, the brothers, the sisters, the mighty men, mighty sisters. All throughout the Bible, they all kept the feast days in the most high. No matter what time period, they kept the feast day. We get Tobit chapter 2 and verse 1. Tobit chapter 2 verse 1. Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me, with my son Tobias, in the feast of Pentecost. In the what? In the feast of Pentecost. The feast of Pentecost is the feast of first fruits. That's the same feast. So Tobias, Toby, and his wife, they all kept the feast of uh, first fruits, Pentecost, we are. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. They kept that feast. And that's in the Apocrypha. They say the Apocrypha don't, don't count. No, this is part of the Bible. We are. There was a good dinner prepared meat. There's a feast, a good dinner prepared. <laughs> we are. 
in the which I sat down to eat. See, he ate a beautiful feast. Even in captivity, he still had to keep the feast. That's why the Lord says what? Don't we what? Do a righteous acts. Do what? And it's the judges in his last days, all throughout the, the day of parallel times, whatever the hell we is. Keep that feast. The most high you messing around. Right? Let's go to 2 Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. 2 Maccabees chapter 12, verse 31. They gave them thanks, desiring them to be friendly still unto them. And so they came to Jerusalem, the feast of the weeks approached. So this is the Maccabees. They gave thanks, like Thanksgiving, right? To your how about you know shot. And they kept the feast of week which was approaching, and then what? You know? And after the feast called Pentecost. So this right here can show you exactly what it is. The feast of weeks. In verse 31 is what? The Feast of Pentecost in verse 32. It's the same one. You know? They went forth against Gorgias, Gorgias, the governor of Idumea. So, in the Feast of Pentecost, the Maccabees went against the Edomites. You see that? They didn't bow down and follow their wicked holidays. No, they kept their feast days of the Most High. You know? Who came out with 3,000 men of foot and 400 horsemen. And it happened that in their fighting together, a few of the Jews were slain. See, a few of the Jews were slain. Why? Because they wasn't protected, you know? At which time, Sosithius, one of Bessonor's company, who was on horseback and a strong man, was still upon Gorgias. And taking hold of his coat, drew him by force. You know what? And when he would have taken that cursed man alive, a horseman of Theresia come, come, coming upon him, smote off his shoulder, so that Gorgias fled into Marisa. So they killed so many Israelites, and then the Matthew he fought back, and then Esau ran like a coward. Whenever he fight back, Esau would have run now. But he would have come with a sneak attack. But look what Julius Matthew says, you know? Now when they that were with Gorgias have fought long and were weary. They were with Gorgias for long and weary, you know? Judas called upon the Lord. He did what? Called upon the Lord. Lord. He called upon the white man. Called upon the Lord. He called upon Joe Biden. Called upon the Lord. He called upon the Lord and did what? That he would show himself to be their helper and leader of the battle. So Judas, in a time of Pentecost, fought against the Idumeans, which were Edomites, and he called upon the Most High, and he said, show yourself in this battle. Lead us to battle. They not just kept the feast day, but they also went to war. At the same time. They had a balance. That's why I said, we go to camp, that's that spiritual war, and then we come back and keep these feast day. The most high is going to protect us. We are. And with that, he began in his own language. He began in his what? Own language. That's the Hebrew language. Now look what he did in the Hebrew language. We are. In some songs. With a loud voice. It's like the Lord prayer. Like Shema, Yeshua, Allah, or Abanawa, or Shalak Rayel. All of these are the Lord's prayers, man, in Hebrew. And you're singing that song in what? In the Hebrew tongue. When you say it in Hebrew, it has more vibration, more power. You know? And rushing unaware of the Congregate's men, he put them to flight. He put them to flight. Like it says Joshua 23 and 10. One of you shall chase a thousand. And put them to flight. Why? Because the Lord's going to have righteousness. The heathens don't want us to know that. That's why they kept defiling our temple, because they know the temple is very important. When we go in there and we what? We sanctify and keep our feast days. They don't want us to be connected with the Most High again. We are. So Judas gathered his host and came into the city of Obelon. And when the seventh day came, they purified themselves. Like the Sabbath. When the seventh day came, they purified themselves. What is that also speaking about? When you go to war, when you're around what? A dead body. See that? When you're around a dead body, guess what? It takes seven days for purification. That's like the situation that happened this morning. Right? Shout out to the brother Adam and his wife, Yabella, for the beautiful food, the service, and everything. They had that joint hooked up. You know, they had a situation that had to go on. You know? You learn. Everything is a learning experience. Everything's a learning experience, but seven days is when you become pure or uh, clean. You know what? 
So even in battle, after the battle, they had only seven days to be clean. No, they feasted. They feasted before. Yeah. We do As the custom was, and kept the Sabbath. And did what? Kept the Sabbath. So after they was clean and holy, they also kept the Sabbath. That's talking about the what? The holy gathering, holy convocation. You know? And upon the day following, as the youth had been, Judas and his company came to take up the bodies of them that were slain. We are. And to bury them with their kinsmen in the father's grave. So all people that died in war, they had an honorable death. They didn't just leave their bodies over there. They buried them with respect. But the key thing in the verse before, it says what? It was our customs. They kept the Sabbath in the same place. Why is that important? Go to 2 Matthew 6 and verse 6. It's our customs. These feast days is our customs. Ain't nothing going under the sun. The Edomites came in and switched the whole damn rules around. Push us off our sweat. 2 Matthew 6 and verse 6. 2 Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath day, or ancient fast, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. See, it wasn't lawful in the times of what? The Greeks. Because there was ruling. So if you say he was a Jew, or kept the Sabbath days, or even the feast days of the Most High, guess what happened? Jump to verse 9. Verse 9. And whosoever would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles, should be put to death. They shall be what? Shall be put to death. What happened when the rest of our people want to keep the feast of first fruits? Should be put to death. What happened when we try to keep the Sabbath? Should be put to death. You see that? They didn't want us to keep these feast days. They put it a law. They said, if you keep any of these feast days, and you said you were a Jew, we're going to kill you. We're going to kill you. Why? Because they know when we connect to the Most High, He gives us that power. We cannot lose in anything. We can't lose it. Anything. Jump to no. verse 1. Verse 1. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to prepare the Jews to depart from the laws of their father. They said, 